Hey, what's up, people? We're going to be taking a look at this uh, Milwaukee M12 and M18 battery charger. And this thing does not belong to me, but the guy that does own it, uh, he owns a uh, automotive shop. And he said that somebody was uh, grinding in the vicinity of this charger uh, with, with the grinder. And that little metal uh, sparks and all that stuff, like little debris were uh, like flying into it. And he said that they saw like a bright <laughs> spark in there and dead. So it may be as simple as a fuse, or it may be a little more complicated. I don't know, but let's go ahead and open it up. I have actually already removed the screws, but I have not taken a look inside. So I'll be uh, just as surprised as uh, you will be. So let's see what we have. And why does this not want to come off? There it goes. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, it looks like this, the battery contacts kind of want to release, but they're not quite. I think we have some wires holding this up. I cannot pull it up. Ah, I see. Okay. So the uh, battery contact wires are a few inches long, but they come from all the way over on this side of the board. And oh, geez. Yeah, I'd say there's a lot of metal debris in here. <laughs> Look at all that. So we'll see if so. Oh, I already see it. Yep, it's uh down there. It's a little smoky, and we may be lucky. The I actually repaired one of these. Um, not this exact same model, but I think it was a Milwaukee Charger some time ago, and I had ordered two of these um the switching controllers, and I think it's got the same exact one down in there. But we'll find out. So it's going to require cleaning all the debris out of here and we'll see if uh well actually we'll find out if uh, this fuse here needs replacing as well if that's blown then we'll have to uh, replace that but for sure that switching regulator looks bad there are no other screws that i can see so everything else should just come out actually if i can pull this battery contact here out there it goes okay so set that aside Pull the board out. This thing is not screwed in, but it needs to release in order to uh, be able to get the, the big board out. So it's just on some standoffs there. Oh, I think it had some adhesive right there. I can kind of, you see the little shininess on the, on the plastic standoff. So yeah, I think it was just kind of glued in place, but that releases it. So this is for like the, the battery that you drop in there. And then we've got the other battery contacts for the type that slides in. So there it is. I'm going to probably take all this stuff outside and blow it out. So I should probably do that first because I want to leave a bunch of little metal uh, debris and stuff right here on my bench. So one moment. We'll be right back. Okay. It's not that awesome, but it's definitely a lot better. So if we look down in there, we can see a resistor that had uh, one of its legs like completely blasted off. So that's going to need to be replaced. And uh, down in here, it's going to be kind of hard to see there, but looks like some of the legs on that uh, device there got blown off as well. Now, if we're lucky, that device is going to be a TOP-256, I think, or something like that. Uh, and I do have an extra one of those, and uh, so we're going to have to remove this heat sink by desoldering that one there and that point right there. And then I'll remove all the uh, solder from those pins. That should allow me to pull this entire heat sink out with that component on board. And that'll also give us a little bit more access down to in there to remove that resistor, although I can desolder the pins. So uh, it should be able to come out that way. I don't see anything else that looks fried. So I'm thinking that maybe like a big enough uh, chunk of metal flew in there that shorted the the component there. Maybe because, I mean, that's powered directly by like mains. So we have uh, mains coming into here. We've got some, is there a, yeah, so we've got some filtering right there. That goes off into this rectifier. And so then we have, we have our uh, like uh, positive and negative going to these uh, two large capacitors. So, uh, yeah, if I don't see anything else that's damaged anywhere, 
I'm kind of leaning towards it possibly just being the, uh, this at the moment. Uh, this uh, bottom side is all conformal coded, so the chances of something like shorting out down here is probably uh, definitely a lot lower. But as we saw, all the debris was on the uh, top side. So uh, there is some conformal coding as well. Funnily enough, there's like none right there in that area where the uh, those components uh, just totally blasted. So yeah, let's uh, take the heatsink off and uh, we'll see what component we have and all that. Uh, before I remove that stuff though, let's check the fuse and see if it's popped. It's possible that if this uh, exploded like really quickly, it could have just been the uh, charge from the capacitors here that, you know, caused it like all to uh, blow to pieces. And if it was quick enough, it may not have affected this uh, fuse. So let's see what we have across the fuse. And if that's not blown, then it's something I'm not going to have to replace. But... Am I puncturing the... No, I think it did blow. Yeah. No, nah, that fuse is gone. All right, so out comes all of that stuff. Oh no, I decided the wrong thing. It's this one. Double teaming these heat sink uh, mounting pins. All right, let's see if everything here comes out. It should be free. Got a bunch of that uh, adhesive, uh, silicone adhesive stuff over everything, so. Okay, got a. Fight a little extra to get to uh, pull stuff out. So there's the fuse. There's that resistor. There's that resistor severed leg. There's a close above that fuse. So it says 3.15 amps, 250 volt. There it goes. And there's the damage. So we've got another severed leg down there as well. All right, let's see what we got here. Hopefully, it's this uh, uh, part right here. So let's remove the, the clip. TOP two fifty six EG, and I have a TOP two fifty six EG. Yes. <laughs> oh no, I was wrong. It's a it's a TOP two sixty six FG. I don't know what the difference is, but this is the one I have. It's a TOP two fifty six EG. Or is that EG as well? And it just looks like an F. Oh, it is EG. I don't know what the difference between a 266 and a 255 is, so I'm going to have to look it up. I looked up the data sheets for both of the parts that, well, the one that I have on hand is the top of 256, and the one that's on the board was the top 266. And it actually appears that they're extremely identical. If we look at this uh, typical application diagram here, we see that they're, I mean, they're exactly the same. So it seems like the HX, which is the one that I have, uh, would be like a drop-in replacement, except that there are a few differences uh, in the uh, JX one. If we look right here at the, um, the output power table, we'd see that for both of these parts, like the specs are identical. The only place where I could find a, a difference was down in these graphs. Uh, if we look at this one right here, we see how it's got this like slope that's pretty much just like linear all the way down. This one here has a little bit of a different slope on this little section than it does on the rest of it. So I'm guessing that has to do with something internal. It does say right here on this uh, data sheet for the 266 that it says like the top switch eight checks. Uh, the top 264 to 271 is an integrated switch mode power supply, yada, yada, yada. But it says that, where does it say it? Somewhere around here. Oh, that right here, that the, uh, the top uh, 264, 271 offers many transparent features that do not require any external components. So it seems like the differences are mostly internal to the component. Externally, they're pretty much the same. But since I didn't design this power supply, and I don't know how some of that stuff's been implemented, and also since this uh, charger does not belong to me, uh, we're going to stick with the original part number. And so I've already ordered that along with the other stuff that we're going to need, the fuses, the resistor. And so we're going to swap those out and then we'll give it a shot. However, I'm not going to plug this directly into the wall. I'm going to use like the dim bulb method uh, once more just to uh, make sure that it does power up and we'll see if the uh, these LEDs uh, come on or something.
Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have a battery on hand that I could test this with. So I'm going to have to put it together, make sure that nothing blows up when we uh, try it with the dim bulb. If that passes, then I'll go ahead and plug it in straight into the wall. But I will have to uh, get a hold of a battery or just test it when I give it back. So this is pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of swapping out the components. And I am going to clean up some of that uh, darkened uh, board stuff right there because I don't want any of that to be conductive. We want to avoid having any additional problems. Uh, I do want to check this rectifier, though. Check the diodes in there. Make sure those weren't damaged when the uh, unit shorted. Yeah, other than that, it's just a matter of swapping this stuff out. And then we'll see what happens. One thing I did here before I replaced this component is I kind of outlined with a marker there where the part actually sits. Because soldering the part onto the board and then trying to put this on is going to be fairly difficult due to the fact that there's a capacitor right there. But as long as it's uh, aligned within those lines, uh, it fits like right into the board because I had already removed this and I put it back in here just to uh, test it out. So it will work if it's like this. Uh, I will loosen up this screw though so I can put some heat sink paste or uh, thermal paste on the back of this uh, new component and then I can clamp it down. And as long as it stays within those lines, we can see that it's going to be aligned pretty much uh, perfectly right there so that I should be able to just slide the heat sink back into its uh, spot. I'll do the screw. I'll clean that up. And then I'll put the new part on. Yeah, I ended up rubbing a little bit of that marker off, but it should be fine. It's still good enough there to see where it was. Okay, let's try to tighten this down. I'm holding it with the plier on the opposite side. Yeah, it's shifting on me. <laughs> okay, I think that's going to do it there. I'm trying to get that clip back straight there. Make sure this component is aligned in the marks that I made. All right, I think that's as good as that's going to get. I can't say that this is my favorite type of package or anything. I, it's kind of annoying how it needs to be held in like that, and then it wants to like shift around and stuff while you're tightening it. But it'll work. Okay, thankfully, it feels like a lot of this stuff is on the surface, and it's actually on the conformal coating, which it had very little of on this side, so it's coming out fairly easily. All right, so that cleaned up fairly well. The rectifier seems to test okay. I am getting a diode drop where I should be on all these terminals. So, yeah, no issues there. I haven't really dealt with having to replace any of these cartridge fuses. Usually it's like the little glass ones, even if they have like the leads on them. So I wasn't entirely sure how to identify if it was a like a slow blow or a fast blow. And what I learned is that if it's got a T before the value, so this is says this one says T 3.15, that means it's time, so that means it's a slow blow. If it was a fast blow, it would be F and then 3.15. So the new ones I got, also a, a slow blow, so it's got the T 3.15 right there. And so this is going to be the replacement. The only thing about the replacement is that it's a little bit taller than the original, but all the specs are the same, so it should work just fine. And the new resistor is put in their place. I haven't soldered it in yet. I'm going to try to slide in the heat sink and the, the controller in here. That, see, the pins went right in. So I got perfect alignment on that. And some flux. Got to resolder in this diode that I accidentally <laughs> removed the solder from. And on the heat sink mounting tabs. All right, that should do it. Oh, actually, I need to solder in the fuse still. Okay, I do believe we are ready to test here. I've got all the components reinstalled. I got everything soldered in, leads clipped and everything, and I've made sure that uh, everything here appears to be uh, soldered correctly and it um, has continuity to the traces where they're uh, supposed to go to. And if you uh, watch that Dell video I did where I did this sort of dim bulb thing, you're kind of familiar with this setup. It's uh, not the greatest. It's a little haphazard, but I do need to come up with a more uh, efficient way to do this because I have to cobble up something every time I want to test something like this. But what we're going to do is we're going to plug this into this outlet right here. This bulb is wired in a series with this other plug here. So this is going to go into uh, an outlet. 
And so this charger is going to be uh, drawing power through the, the bulb here. So if this bulb lights up and it stays lit, that means that there's still something here potentially uh, shorted, which is not good. So we're going to have to investigate it. But all the other components look fine. And it was really only the primary side of the power supply here that was damaged due to like debris or whatever, shorting out the like the high voltage line. So none of the low voltage stuff should have been affected at all, I don't think. So, well, let's see what happens. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to plug this into here. So then I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to plug it into an outlet. And if I see the bulb come on and stay on, then I'll have to, you know, unplug it, make sure there's nothing else wrong over here. But even if it goes on for like a fraction of a second and then dims out, that's probably just due to these capacitors here charging. So that's okay. Let's see what happens. And I'm plugging it in now. And absolutely nothing happened. I don't know if the LEDs on this come on without a battery being plugged in. I guess we could test and see if there's maybe like voltage present at some of these uh, terminals. All right, we're going to probe this uh, set of terminals right here and see if there's anything coming out of it. I do need to be careful without <laughs> or to prevent touching anything like on this side because that is the uh, high voltage side. So let's see what we get right here. There's nothing there. I guess I should check and see if make sure that I've got power coming out of this outlet. Let's turn this to AC. Let's see what we're getting here. Yeah, that's working. Okay, if we have any voltage output, I think we can measure across this capacitor right there. This is the low voltage side, so I'll carefully try to probe it. So this side is negative. This side is positive. Let's see what we get. Oh, hey, 11 point, 10.3, so it's, yeah, that's pretty stable. So it looks like we do have voltage output, and maybe it's just the fact that I don't have a battery to plug in there. Maybe it just doesn't output anything unless you do have a battery. I'm Like I said, I'm not too familiar with these chargers. All right, so if I test these two right here, it does appear to be doing something. It's outputting 15.7 volts right there, so I guess it's working. I I just can't uh, fully test it without a battery. Okay, since it passed that test, now I'm just going to go ahead and plug this straight into an outlet and make sure that nothing here fries or blows up or anything. So here we go. Plugging it in now. Nope. Nothing happened. I think we're good. <laughs> I guess I could have just put it in the bottom plastic part here just to keep it a little safer, but... We may have a lucky break. There's some dudes doing some work next door, and I'm going to check and see if by any chance they have a Milwaukee battery that I can use to test this with. So we'll be right back. All right, put this on. Come on, plug it. There we go. Okay. Sweet. It's working. <laughs> yes. All right, there we go. All done. So yeah, it was just as simple as replacing all those uh, fried components, which was really only, uh, what, three, the resistor, the uh, controller, and the fuse. And luckily, <laughs> that was it. So yeah, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you all around the bench.